right, today we're going to look at something called the cosine law. So the complement of sine, that's what cosine stands for. Uh, so by the end of today I'll be able to solve for the missing sides and angles in a triangle when primary trig ratios and sine law are not applicable. Uh, so we'll have a bit of a pecking order that we'll go through to make sure we're choosing the right strategy. Uh, so for example, we'll start with something like this. Uh, checklist, is the triangle a right triangle? And we see very quickly, yeah, it's a right triangle. So that's good news for us if it's a right triangle right here. Then we know we can use primary trig ratios. So if I look at this is my given angle, that makes this the opposite. That makes this the adjacent. So what ratio ties those together? So that would be 10. So 10 of 32 degrees equals y over 18. And then we would multiply both sides by 18. Cancel these out, solve for y, and we would be done. 18 times 32, 10, oh, that doesn't look right, 11.24. Let me just double check that again. 32, 10 times 18, 11.24. So let's take a look. Does that make sense? This is a small angle across from a small side. Now the diagram isn't accurate, so we can't really go by the diagram. This guy here, the 32 and a 90, that means this side is 58 degrees. So we would expect, well, that matches up good. So 18 across from a 15, or a 58, 32 across from 11. We would expect this side over here, the hypotenuse, to be a bigger than 18. We weren't asked for it, but it's always good to do a little check. So that's a quick checklist for primary. Uh, so when there's a 90 degree triangle, we just want to use our regular primary trig ratios and our Pythagorean theorem. Keep it simple. When there are no 90 degree angles, okay, then we have to move into our opposite side angle pair or looking for a completed ratio with our sine law. So this is our sine law. And we try and set up sine law so that our unknowns are on top. Unknowns on top. That will make our algebra easier. So when we look at a triangle like this, <coughs> I check for a right angle. There's no right angle. Okay, what trig ratio ties information together? Well, I can't do that because there's no right angle. So all of this bleh, goes away because of the lack of a right angle. So now we have to look at sine law. All right, so if we look at sine law, do we have a complete opposite side angle pair? Well, that's a complete pair. Okay, and this is the unknown pair we're looking for. So I want to set this up with sine A to be on the top. Okay, well, if this is angle A, this is little a. I'm just going to call this side B, or angle B and this little b. So we're going to have sine A over A, sine B, over a little b, and then we're going to put the numbers in that we have. Apologize for the writing. Okay, and then we have sine of 40 and over 8. So to isolate sine of a, we're going to multiply both sides by 6. Alright, so I'm going to go sine of 40 times 6 divided by 8 equals 0 0.482. And now some people will stop there and try and tell me that the angle A is 0 0.482. Okay, that's clearly not going to work. That angle is much bigger than a half of an angle, or half a degree. So we have to remember to take the arc sine. So we take the arc sine of this. And then we should get 28.8 degrees, which fits for our picture. Looks like it's a reasonable answer. If we do a quick check, smallest side across from smallest angle, middle side from middle angle, we would expect this big angle up here to be across from the biggest side C. Again, we're not asked for it, but we're using the right strategies. That worked. Okay. Is there a right angle triangle? Nope. Okay. 
Okay, so that's out. Uh, is there an opposite side angle pair? No, there are no angles. Okay, so this one has a problem. So this is the reason we have a cosine law. So <coughs> we could do this one uh, with all of the number it has, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through it as if it has no numbers, and then we'll come back and solve it with the appropriate cosine technique. Uh, so here's what we do. We drop an altitude, that's what it's called. We're dropping a line down the middle. And there's a couple things to note. This does not necessarily split this side C in half. You can't make that assumption. And in this one you can see it's actually a bit favored to the left. So what we do, I've labeled A, little a, across from it, B, little b across from it, C, and little c across from it. I've put this new line we've called called H in there, and then I'm calling this side X and this side C minus X. Okay, and what I've created is I've created two small triangles. So I've created a yellow triangle on this side. Okay, and if we did a Pythagorean theorem with that yellow triangle, we would get X squared plus H squared equals B squared. That's right there. And as I mentioned before, don't fall in love with letters Okay, you have to understand where they are and what they mean. So in this case, B is my hypotenuse. H is not the hypotenuse, it's just a side. Okay, it's just a letter denoting something. Okay, <clears throat> then we also have a triangle on this side. And we'll do Pythagorean theorem with that as well. Okay, and that's this one. C minus X squared, that's the bottom, or a leg. H squared is another leg right here. And the A squared is actually the hypotenuse. Now if we multiply out the c minus x all squared, it just turns into this. Okay, and from there, we're going to try and bring a few pieces together. And you'll see a formula starting to shape up. Uh, here, x plus h squared, you'll notice, that's also found over here. Okay, so what happens is we can actually make a substitution Instead of having x squared plus h squared, we can just put in a b squared. And I just removed two variables in one shot. Now the last thing I want to get rid of is this x. Well, I'm going to come back up here. The cosine of angle A for the yellow triangle is just x over b. Well, if I rearrange that, and I isolate the x, I can now take this piece and substitute it in for x. And so my new equation becomes c squared minus 2cb cos capital A plus b squared equals a squared. And at first that won't look very useful or helpful to us. So we're going to just rearrange it a little bit more so it's a little cleaner and easier to see. I'm going to rearrange it so that the a squared is the first term we write. And then I'm going to say equals b squared plus c squared. And right now you'd be saying, hey, that kind of looks like Pythagorean theorem. And you're right, it is. Okay, but there's more to write down. Minus 2 times b times c times cos a. Okay, and that final line is actually your cosine law. So if, in terms of trying to remember it, it's Pythagorean theorem with a twist. And there's a couple things we can use in that twist. So cosine law can be written like this, can be written like this, or it can be written like this. Okay, and there's a couple of patterns we absolutely have to learn so we don't write it incorrectly. Whatever the first letter is you're starting with, it's the same as the last letter you finish with. So notice A and A, B and B, C and C. Okay, the two middle letters, here and here, also show up in front here. Okay, and it's important to note, this is one big term. These things are all multiplied together. And we'll make that mistake later, almost guaranteed, but I'm just going to point it out now. So notice A and C. A and C. A and B, A and B. Alright, so those are our patterns. Now if I gave you 
a triangle that had vertices x, y, and z, what would cosine law look like? So pause the video for a second and see if you can write it down. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try it. <coughs> hopefully you've had a chance to try and put the microphone back down here. Um, so let's give it a whirl. So I'm just going to write them in order. If this is x squared, that equals y squared plus z squared. Okay, so I've used up the three letters. Then x starting means I have to finish with an x. Minus 2 times y times z times cos x. That's it. Now if you put them in a different order, again, you just have to follow the same pattern. If we do y first, it's y squared equals x squared plus z squared minus 2xz cos y. Okay, so now let's go back up to our triangle up here. Okay, so I'm going to give some things some letters. Here's A, here's a little B, this would be angle B, C, and C. So I ha I'm looking for angle A, so I want to make sure I start with an A. So I'm going to write A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. <coughs> Okay, so that's the angle I'm looking for, so that sort of guides which cosine setup I use. Then I'm going to put the information in for all of the letters. So A is 18 squared, B is 16 squared, C is oops, 28 squared minus 2 times 16 times 28 times cos A. Okay, and we're approaching, if you want to pause it here and try it, um, this is where the first consistent mistake always shows up. So this is 324, 16 squared is 256, oops, 256, 28 squared is 784, and then minus 2 times 16 times 28 equals minus 896 cos A. Okay, and I'm really going to encourage you, pause it here. Pause it here and do the next line on your own, and it will save you making a mistake repeatedly in the future. So pause it here and fill in the next line. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to try it. Um, here's the mistake. People add these two together, no problem and whatever, for some reason they keep going and they subtract this guy. You can't subtract the 896 from these two terms. This over here is a package. Okay, so what you might want to do to avoid making that si simple mistake is put a bracket on this. Okay, now you can add and subtract the 256 and the 784 to the other side. So we can subtract 256 Subtract 784 and 324 minus 256 minus 784 equals negative, oops, better go to blue, negative 716 and that equals negative 896 cos A. And now the next mistake people make is they try and add 896 to get the cosine A alone. These two things are multiplied together on this side. These are multiplied. So you cannot add. You have to divide both sides by negative 896. These will cancel. And now you'll be left with 716 divided by 896 you should get 0 0.799 somewhere around there equals cos a and it's a negative divided by a negative so it's positive and then once you're at this line now you just have to take the arc cosine and solve for a 36.95 degrees so 
we could probably just say that's 37 degrees. So if we go up here and we look at our, let's just say 37 for ease. So if I go up and I say angle A is 37 degrees, okay, now something has happened by finding that angle. Do I now have an opposite side angle pair? And the answer is yes. So now I can go to sine law to find all the other missing pieces of information. You should only have to use cosine in a problem once. Okay, so <clears throat> those are our cosine laws. I'll try one more here. Uh, we've just did one that has all three sides, so I'll leave that for you for now. And I'll do this one. <coughs> okay, so is there a right angle? Nope. Is there an opposite side angle pair? Nope. Um, <coughs> we want to try and find all the missing information. We'll see how fast I can do that. Uh, I'm just going to start by giving some things some names. So this is angle A, this is little a. I'll call this B. I'll call this angle C. So this is little c, and this is little b. Okay, now I want to try and find <coughs> uh, some piece of missing information. But when you look at this, and you try and set up your cosine law, you want to try and pair up that first term and that last term. So in this case, I have the angle a. So the first thing I want to go for is little a. So when I write out my cosine law, it's going to be a squared equals b squared plus c squared. No, my penmanship's getting a little worse here, sorry. Minus 2bc times cosine of a. Now, what's nice about this style of question, um, if we jump back to this one here, this is three, on our three sides, no angles. This is one of the cases for a cosine law. It's the hardest of the two. This is the other case. Two sides in a contained angle, so you're missing that opposite side. So let's just fill in what we know. A squared, don't know. Uh, little b is 24 squared. Little c is 36 squared minus 2. Oops, that is a terrible 2. My apologies. Times 24 times 36 times cos 43. Now, what's really good about this question and makes it easy to solve is that the entire right side can go straight into your calculator. So when you're punching that in, you can do it in pieces if you like, but if you know how to use your calculator well and a little bit of brackets, uh, you can punch the whole thing in on one line. That's what I'm doing right now. And you hit equals and you get a squared equals 608. And some people will stop there and say that's the answer. Uh, and we can say that's completely ridiculous because the other sides are 24 and 36. So we've missed something. And the thing we've missed is the square term. So you have to square root both sides to actually get the a value. So if you take the square root of that, you get 24.7. and that's our missing side. Okay, from there you could go to sine law. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm probably, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, but you can set up your sine law and solve for one of the missing angles. And then once you have that, you're just using sum of interior angles to get the other, the third and missing angle. Okay, that's it for cosine law. A few things to try. And I apologize just for the sloppy penmanship, but fighting a pretty nasty cold here. Thanks.